Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I have a special video for you guys. And the reason it's special is because this decision that I've made will not only impact my disc golf career, but it's going to change my entire life. I bought five acres of raw land, but there's more. My family bought 15 acres of land immediately next to it, and I've been given the green light to design, build, and install an 18-hole disc golf course on our combined 20 acres. I would like to take you guys along with me and show you what it's like to build your very own 18-hole disc golf course using no heavy machinery or large equipment. So here we go. I'm going to break down uh, putting in my disc golf course into four steps. Assess your priorities, design the course, clear out the course, and then install baskets, tees, and tee signs. So let's jump into the first step, assessing your priorities. My dad and I sat down and worked out how we wanted this course to go, and we came up with three rules that we wanted to follow when designing the course. The first rule was to make this course challenging. We didn't want this to be an easy beginner course. We want this to be a pro-level, difficult course. The second thing that we decided we want to do is work around live trees as much as possible. We do not want to have to cut down any live trees. Now, you might be okay with clearing out live trees on your course, and that's up to you. That's just a personal decision. But whenever I'm designing the course, then I have to work around the trees as much as possible while still adding in some wooded holes. And last but not least, we want this course to have as many signature holes as possible. So this includes going out of our way to add water carries, a par five, and more that you'll see coming up. And once you have your course rulebook in place, then it's time to start designing the course. There are many different ways to go about this, but the method I'm using is just walking around as much as possible, just walking for hours on the property, going around, finding how I can put the best holes in the property while still not having any crossing over each other. Now, 20 acres might seem like a lot of room, but actually the minimum recommended acreage for an 18-hole disc golf course is 25 acres. So I'm going to be hard-pressed to put in 18 challenging holes on a 20-acre property. For designing the course, I used a very helpful app called UDisc that you can find on the App Store or in Google Play. It basically what it has is a map and you can use GPS to go around and mark tee pads and baskets and then check at the end to see if any of the holes are crossing over or too close to each other. It will create a dangerous situation if someone happens to shank the shot. So I will pull up my UDisc layout right now so you guys can kind of see what my finished product looks like. And once you feel like you have the best design that you can come up with possible, it's time to start clearing the fairways, mowing, cutting branches, all of that good stuff. Ran out of gas on the absolute farthest location possible away from the gas container. Now we have to go all the way back.
That's interesting. Let's go clean it off, see what it says. Braun Cooling Tower. Patented March 13th, 1920. January 16th, 1923. Other patents pending. Manufactured by CF Braun and Company. Well, that was kind of a cool find. I wonder how old this sign actually is. I bet it's probably not 1920, but it's got to be probably from somewhere around there. That's pretty cool. So I did a little bit of digging into the Braun Cooling Tower. Found out that this sign was actually created in the 1920s in Alhambra, California. And I found a listing of a one in slightly better condition on eBay. I'll post the picture of that right now. And that's all I have to say about it. Uh, comment below if you think I could sell this thing for 100 bucks. The course isn't quite finished yet, but I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys a whole breakdown really quick so you can have a little taste of what the course is going to be like. Hole 5 out here at the Promised Land is an 862 foot par 5. As of November 2022, it is the longest hole in Stillwater and one of the top 10 in Oklahoma. Your first shot, you want to clear about 300 feet to get over the casual tall grass. And then let's head up there and take a look at the second shot. Here is where my first shot landed. It's about 375 feet up the fairway. The basket lies just in that little clear out in the forest right there. And you might think this looks like a simple second shot to try to get the eagle, but there is OB tall grass on both sides and it slopes in the closer you get towards the basket. All right guys, so after a 375 foot placement shot and a 450 foot flex shot crush, this is what I'm left with, with to document the first ever eagle on the Promised Land disc golf course, hole number five. Time to work on my Anheuser putting. But anyway, you get the idea. Easy birdie, and that is how you should play this hole. Greetings from the cedar trees at Promised Land Disc Golf Preserve. I'm currently hunting down my special orbit rive up in the top there. I don't even know if you can see it up there. So there, here's me. There's the ground. And I expect to be rewarded with a good view once I reach the top. This is absolutely hilarious. Out of all of the places my disc could have chosen to get stuck, here we are at the very top. This is an amazing view. God is so majestic. There's the front gate over there. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, there it is right there.
but I literally just ate whole 13 out here at the promised land. I haven't even gone to get my disc, it's still, still in the basket. Ace with my putting putter, let's go. Looks like I've spent a combined total of 37 hours riding Mo here. Um, if you guys could help get this video to 37 likes, I would really appreciate it. That'd make all that hard work completely worth doing. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the first ever uh, disc retrieval rescue mission. Disgusting. I hope there's no fish eggs in here. Oh, that is deep. No snake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even like two feet off the edge. I don't think I can go get it. You can. Oh, it's too deep. You're already wet. I know. I'm going to go. <laughs> Turtle! I'm not scared of turtles. Sure. I'm scared of snakes. And butterflies. <laughs> 